Good evening, my brothers and sisters, in glory to God and all the believers all over the earth. Happy New Year! It's the beginning and the first teaching for the year. We all had holidays, we all spent time with our families, and we all been, you know, enjoying the time off with, the, with, the, with each other and the family. And as we're starting this new year, it's the beginning of the new year, so I know a lot of us, we're already on prayer and fasting, as I already sent the messages um, before Christmas to to join me in this um, prayer and fast for direction from the Lord. Tonight's uh, teaching and messages, I, I kept it very, very short. <coughs> Be still. That is the name of the message of tonight. So let's go and read the Psalm 46, verse 10, and see what King David spoke about that. The king of Israel spoke about that. Psalms 46, verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. It's important that we are st st still and hear what the Spirit of God says. How do we do that? Most of the times, it's important that we are fast and pride. When we fast and pride, and when we wait, and we do not move, I don't want us to move and running here and there and everywhere. And we're not supposed to, because I have seen <laughs> a thousands of Christians, and I love all my brothers in the Lord, and they're so eager to, and they're running everywhere. But you know what? They're running ev ev everywhere and anywhere, and actually, it, it's, my heart is like, they are actually hitting the air. They're not hitting the mark. So, be still and know that I'm God. We need to be still and know that He's God, yes, and also wait for Him. And as we wait for Him, and as we do what He calls us to do, He will then be exalted to all the nations. And this is the my day for glory to God, for us to go to the end of the earth and set up glory to God in every capital of the world, all over the earth, and scattered developments, and to the living water, and all the other business because God told me, do not separate glory to God from scattered development, it's one. So, and by doing that, we will he will be exalted all over the earth. So, for every believer who listens to this message tonight, I'm saying to you, <clears throat> what was the last thing the Lord asked you to do? Have you done what He asked you to do? And as we start in this new beginning of this year, be still and do nothing and this scriptures keep coming in, in on me and I want to do I want to we're gonna go back to to be still but also I want to go to first Corinthians chapter 9 verse 26 the Apostle Paul was saying to the Corinthians he said therefore run this not with Uncertainty, that a fight. Not there is one who beats the air. And verse 27 says, But I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest, lest when I preach to others, I myself shall not become disqualified. This is about don't run anywhere and everywhere 
and going because you serving you think you're serving the Lord you think you're serving the Lord you think you do all the things you're supposed to be doing but actually the Lord wants you to hear what he's asking you to do for you to do and now another thing is coming to in, into my uh, in my mind right now a great man of God he's no longer with us he's with the Lord Kenneth Hagin I love his I love his teaching once he said one of his books he said I was he said for three days I told my wife I'm gonna lock myself up in the in the room I'm not gonna I'm not gonna move out of this room unless the Lord speaks to me so he was there and he told his wife, don't call me, don't disturb me, do not remove me, I want to stay here until the Lord speaks to me. So he was there and waiting to hear from the Lord to what to do. Three days went by and there was no answer from the Lord. So he started like all of us do many, many times, complaining. Here I am Lord, here, waiting for you, to hear from you. And you're not talking to me, and I'm here waiting for you to talk to him, la 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 la. And then the Lord speaks to him. He tells him, Well, he said to him, I've been waiting for you for 14 years to hear from me. And you're not hearing me. And you go blind me for three days. And he repented for the Lord. And the Lord gave him the new direction that he needed to do. My brothers and sisters, it's so important for us to fast, for us to pray, for us to be joined together with one another, and for us to walk together in unity, and not to keep swinging the air and fighting nothing and doing nothing. And we can you, a lot of you think that you actually, you're serving the Lord. But I'm telling you, a lot of you hit in the air and doing nothing for what exactly. Find this, find your part. Find who you call to be in the body of Christ. Are you to be part of glory to God? Take your position in the church of God in glory to God. Take your position in the body of Christ and do that and that only. I got a good deal, sorry. Okay, now let's also read in James chapter 1, verse 19. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear slow to speak and slow to rub. Open your ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to you before you do anything. And hear clearly what the Holy Spirit is telling you to do for 2022. Slow to speak. Don't open your mouth. Because a lot of Christians who have it in you, the mind, actually do a lot of harm in the body of Christ. And a lot of, and a lot of unbelievers, they look at those people and says, you think you're a Christian? That's a Christianity. So, my brothers and sisters, You hear first, don't tell a lot, just speak when you're supposed to speak. Do not open your mouth and keep speaking and bubbling about nothing. Speak when it's important for you to speak. And very slow to rub. Let the Lord deal with the problem that you have. If you've been done wrong by a brother or sister, give it to the Lord. Because a lot of the times, you know how many people have hurt me? How many people 
they've done wrong things to me and how none of them actually come back to me and said to me, I'm sorry, brother, for what we've done to you. But you know what? Leave it. Leave the wrath to the Lord because a lot of times we think we're right. It's your story. It's the other person's story. And it's God's truth. So I encourage you to hear clearly from the Lord. Don't say much. And don't be angry. That's for the year, for this year. Let's also let's go to Exodus 14, verse 14. The Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. The Lord will do all the fighting for you. The only thing that required for you to me to do is stay in peace. And um, I have said this many times before, I'm going to say it again one more time, because a lot of you maybe haven't heard it before. There was actually out here, outside here on this parking here, I was with the brother Prime in the car. And the Lord said to me, where you are, I'm not. So what do you mean, Lord? He said to me, you are angry. And that was a bad business. Was, I was trying to bear this business that I was had a lot of problem with this proper land. And I said to him, what do I do, Lord? Come into my peace, he said. I said, I'm sorry, Lord, please forgive me. I'm coming to your peace. And as I said that, and I was going to his peace, I saw him coming over me, becoming one with me. And then he said to me, now you declare and proclaim to what you want done. Stay in peace. The Lord will fight for you. He does all the fighting. We do all the prayer. He does all the fighting. Amen? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now. Let's go on here to, uh, to Psalm 62, verse 5. My soul waits silently for God alone. For my expectation is from Him. King David, King of Israel, he had everything he could have in his hands. He had the whole army, he had wives, children, government, money, had everything. And yet he said, My soul waits in silence. It's important that we be silent and hear what the Spirit of God said to us for us to do. As we do these things, now we're, gonna, we're going to talk about Enjoying the presence of God. If you don't do the things that I just told you now, you're not going to enjoy no presence of God. You're not going to be in the presence of God. You're going to be talking, you're going to be screaming, you're going to be fighting, you're going to be saying all the right words, praise the Lord, hallelujah, thank you Jesus. You're going to be saying all those things. 
they are talking. But you will not be experiencing the presence of God. So now let's go and look at some of the scriptures about experiencing the presence of God. But before you, you read, this, read the scriptures, you need to do all that, that I spoke to you before. So let's go to Psalm 16, verse 11. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At the right hand are pleasures forevermore. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. You will show me the path of life. The Holy Spirit will show you the path of life. But if you're not in silence, you're not going to hear him what he's saying to you. You're not going to be in his presence when the, because he says, in my presence is the fullness of joy. If you're not in his presence, if you don't do the things that I said before, you're not going to be in his presence to enjoy his presence. So for him to come as he did with me years ago, he came with the right to the right hand, he grabbed me out of my bedroom and took me for a spin around the wall. With his right hand, and he said to me, George, do not worry. Nothing's going to happen to you. I have got you. I have got you in my right to the right hand, as it says in Isaiah 41 verse 10. So in God's presence is fullness. But we need to be in His presence for us to enjoy the fullness of God. Let's now also read God to Exodus 33 verse 14. And he said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. God says to Moses, My presence will go with you. Now we're going to go and read a little bit more in, in, from verse 16 to 20 to 23 to understand what happened here because Moses said to God, if you don't come with us, Lord, leave us here. I don't want to go nowhere. If you don't come up with us, I will not. And he said also, show me your glory. But let's read from 16 to 23, okay? Then he said to him, if your presence does not go with us, no, no, where did you, sorry, where did you this? Uh, that's, then he said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not bring us From here, this is what Moses said to God. In verse 16, sir, for how then will it be known that your people that I have found grace in your sight, except you go with us? So we shall be separate your people and I from all the people from uh, up on the face of the earth. So how the people know around the, the, around the earth, Moses says, if your president doesn't go and it's not, it's not, you know, with us, how the people know that we're different to them? How the people know as us as Christians that we're different than them if we don't actually carry his presence everywhere we go? Verse 17. So the Lord says to Moses, I will also do this that you have spoken. For you have found grace in my sight, and I know you 
by name. God said to Moses, I know you by name. <clears throat> Why? Because Moses was very humble, the Bible tells us. So God says, because he was humble, he says, I know you by the name, and because you ask me that, I will do that for you. Verse 18. And he said, please show me your glory. And Moses said to him, please, Lord, show me your glory. Verse 19, God says, then he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will be compassionate to whom I will be compassionate. But he said, you cannot see my face, for no man shall see my face and live. You cannot comprehend the glory of God to be over you. You can't live by seeing face to face. Okay? And the Lord said, here's a place by me. And you should stand on the rock. So I shall be while my glory passes by and I will put you in the cliff of the rock and I will cover you with my hand while I pass by. Then I will take away my hand and you shall see my back but my face shall not be seen. As Moses spoke to God and said, if you don't come with us, I don't want to go nowhere. I'm the same. If God, the Holy Spirit, Jesus and God, is not directing this ministry, and if we not stand down and pray and fasting, and as we not move together in love towards one another, I don't want to be one of the Christians that just hit the air and doing nothing. I want exactly to be exactly for every church of glory to go all over the earth to be exactly to do exactly what the Lord asks us to do. And I know me first. I went ahead of him for many many years. I had. I wanted to serve him. I wanted to. It was wrong, but I was too excited for what he has shown me to be and do for him. And for a, for a time, the Lord allowed those things to happen. But now, I know he wants me and all of us to be still. Let's also read now verse John chapter 4 verse 16. <coughs> and we have known and believed the love God has for us. God is love and he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. And have we, we have known and believed The love God is for us. Do you know how much God loves you? You know, many years ago, my wife and I we went to a place, and there was this person, I'm not gonna say names, who was trying to deliver this man all the time. And God told me to go and tell this man who was the other man who was trying to deliver him from this demonic spirit supposed to have on him, God told me, go and tell him how much I love him. To know and believe the love God has for us, you have to know and believe how much he loves you. Because if you understand how much he loves you, he will change. If you believe, because a lot of us go through circumstances and problems in life. In that point, 
the enemy will tell you, where is God? Is he with you? Really is he with you? Is he helping you? What are you saying at a point? What are you, God? Oh, I know how much you love me. I know that you never leave me or you forsake me. I know you're with me. God is love. And he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. So we need to understand God is love. But he who abides in love, we also need, because we are his children, to abide in love or to watch one another and to love our neighbor, to love our enemy as we love ourselves. Yeah, a lot of you might say, well, I don't even know if I love myself. First, you need to learn how much he loves you and accept that. And walk in that understanding that he love is for you, then you can love yourself to love someone else. We have known and believed. The Apostle John knew the love of Christ. He was putting his head, his ear on the chest of Jesus. And he said in his gospel, I am the one the Lord loves. He didn't care about anybody else. He said, the Lord, the Lord loves me. And when they're trying to boil him with oil, they're going to kill him. They're going to kill him. Because he knew. He was there. Can you imagine being locked up in an island, in a, in a cave for years? And then God gives you to write the revelation of the Bible. He knew the love of Christ. And he speaks. He speaks about himself. He says, and we know and believe the love God has for us. For us. God is love. And he who abides in love, he abides in God and God in him. So we have to abide in love with one another. So God love, so God is also abiding us. But we need to understand and know how much love is first. I can just continue with this for the whole night, but well, let's going to move on. Rejoice always. First book Thessalonians 5, verse 16. Very short. Scripture. Rejoice always, he says. He says that first. So it's important that we always in harmony, always rejoicing, always whatever you do in this earth, whatever you might be, God call you do, in your job, in your family, in the business, in the church. Whatever you do, always rejoice, always be always be happy. Do not, do not allow the circumstances you might be in right now to change the happiness that you should have every day. And you need to understand and rely on the Lord and allow Him to do everything else around you. But always rejoice in the Lord. And then the next scripture is in verse 17, it says, which is again is important for us to do, pray without ceasing. Pray continuously without stopping praying. And as with the moment we are in prayer and fasting for this month, continuously praying, but rejoicing first. Don't do anything at all because I say for you to do. You need to want to pray. You need to want to fast the Lord. You need to want to have direction in your life this year from the Lord. And when you do that, you have to be rejoicing. The 
next one we can talk about is love and forgive. So your prayers cannot be hindered. See, this teaching that I'm giving you tonight, it will be your foundation for this, uh, for this year to go forward. If you want things to happen in your life, and some things are not happening in your life, and some things that might be blocked in your life, is because the enemy is putting uh, stoppages before you, you see, because set you up before to be able to put blockages in your life. See, the devil first set you up to do something wrong so that he can block you. So now I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to you about this. So to help you and me, all of us, so our prayers don't get hindered. So let's read first from Matthew 22, verse 37 to 40. Jesus said to him, You shall love your God, your Lord, your God, with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. And the second is like it. You should love your neighbor as yourself. On those two commandments hangs all the law of the prophets. In these two commandments that I just spoke now is the whole Bible. You love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, with all your soul, and love your neighbor or your enemy as yourself. So to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, you must know that He loves you. You must know that He is good for you. It's important that you have the right teachings, because there are so many different teachings out there. We actually will damage a lot of people and take you away from God, these teachings. So, Please stick to the teachings that I'm giving you in glory to God and that will help you to understand and learn, read the scriptures, read the Bible and learn who you are in Christ and understand the importance of loving your God. And that is not a, an idea. It's a commandment. It's a commandment from the Lord to protect you from yourself and from the enemy, the enemy of your soul. Your enemy is not the people on this world, they're not your brothers in this world, they're not, they're not, the, then they are not your enemies. The enemy is the devil who is trying to trick you and lie to you and Again, you need to understand, God forgave you. God died for you on the cross. God the Son died for you on the cross. When you were the biggest sinner, I know about me, I was the biggest sinner in this world. And He came and loved me on the worst point of my life. So it's important then, as He who knew no sin became sin for you and, and saved you from hell, for eternity, that we need to turn around to love this God with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul, and with all our strength, and love our neighbor as our souls. Amen? Mm -hmm. Now, let's read Matthew chapter 5, verse 23 and 24. Therefore, if 
you bring your gift to the altar and they remember that you that your brother has something against you leave your gift there before the altar and go your way first be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift Most Christians, this they forget about this. They want to serve the Lord, they want to run for the Lord, they want to give for the Lord, they want to do for the Lord. But when it comes to the very point it says here, God says very here, here very clearly. Don't bring me nothing to my altar. Don't bring not, don't give me nothing. If you can't forgive your brother, if you can't forgive your enemy. He says, I am love and I love you. You are my son or my daughter and I made you in my image. So therefore you are my daughter and my son and you represent me. So therefore you are my spiritual son and daughter on this earth. You need to represent me in the way I am. Love. So therefore go and love your neighbor before you bring in anything to my altar before you give me any gifts now that works my brothers and sisters don't play at church don't try to be a Christian be a Christian be a son of the living God be a daughter of the living God let people see you and say there's something about this person. Something different about this person. So leave the gift. Therefore, in the altar, and go your way and reconcile with your brother. Which is now is taking us to the first Peter chapter 3, verse 7. Husband, husbands, that's for us boys, likewise, dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to your wife as the weaker vessel, and as being heard together of the grace of life, that your prayers might not be hindered. Here it says to honor our wives, to love our wives. They are the, they, they are the weaker vessels in the marriage, the Bible says. And he says they are also heirs together. Don't run away by yourself without your wife. Heirs together, one. Two in one. We are one. So your prayers might not be hindered. See, the enemy, the enemy will try to bring the, the deception and to break your family, to break your marriage, to break your not working together with you and your wife. So your prayers cannot be hindered. He will do that. So whatever you pray, whatever God wants to do in your life, the enemy knows what God wants to do in your life. He is trying to stop it by hindering you. So that's what the man to do. Now let's also read the other part, what the wives got to do. So because this is for both, not just for one, it's for, it's for both. Okay, so now we're going to read from 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 3 to 6. Do not let your adornment of, of merely adverts arranging her wearing gold or putting on fine a pearl rather let to be hidden person of the heart with the incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit which is very precious in the sight of God for in this manner in former times 
the holy women who trusted in God when doing themselves being submissive to their own hus husbands, a Sarah a by Abraham calling him Lord, those daughters you are, if you do good and are not afraid with any terror. My sisters in the Lord, I love you all so much. But a lot of you have so much, so many securities in your lives. And that happened because some things happened in your life in the journey to come here. And a lot of you put in more attention in fixing the hair, the face, the nails, the external. But God says to, hit, to have the hidden beauty. So it's important that you understand how much God loves you. Understand how much your husband loves you. And be submissive to your husband as he dies for you, as Christ dies for his church. This is for both husband and wife. Okay? And he says to have a, to be, to have, to have a beauty, a gentle and quiet spirit. A gentle and quiet, a scream, yell, carry on. Because that's present before God, he says. And the former woman in the past, he says, they were submissive to the, to the husband. And Sarah, he said, and by Abraham, he called him Lord. Those daughters you are, if you do good and are not afraid of any terror. You don't need to be afraid of anything. But we are, women are the daughters of Abraham. Sorry, the daughters of Sarah. And men are the sons of Abraham. It's in the spirit, we are the sons, and women are the daughters in the spirit. And this is important that we do all those things so our prayers cannot be hindered. And also, not just only for that, but to have a godly life, to have harmony in your home, for your children to be happy with their mom and dad. And for the people to look at your marriage and look at the two of you and say, there's something in that family. I want what's in that family. I give you the opportunity to share the gospel and get the people saved. Now bear fasting. I don't know many of you if you got the information. Uh, as we said before, our sister here in the lot who gives me a lot of help and to God bless her. Nanda is a beautiful lady and she does so much for glory to God here in Australia. And please pray for her. Two scriptures. I don't know if any of you fasting or not, but there are two scriptures that I want to, there's many, there are more than two that we put in there on the, the, and the letter was sent out to the churches. But those two, it's important. If some of you have not, uh, I myself doing the Daniel fasting, uh, and I'm going to read from Daniel chapter 10, verse 2 to 6, which is Daniel fasting. Daniel, Daniel chapter 10, verse 2 to 6. In these days, Daniel was mourning three full weeks. I ate no present food, no meat, no wine, come into my mouth, nor did I anoint myself with oil until three whole weeks were fulfilled. Now, on the 20th Fourth day of the first month, and it was by the side of the great river that it was Tigris. I lifted my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, those waist was gritted with gold, and up, 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 has his body was like barrel. 
Beryl, his face like the fears of lightning, his eyes like torches of fire, his arms and fell like burnside bronze in color and his sound of his words like the voice of a multitude. This talks about the fasting of three weeks. He talks about to be probably just vegetables and he talks about no wine, nothing like that, nothing else. And this is the fast that I'm doing for three weeks. And uh, if you, but we wanted to be from the, from the beginning, from the 10th, or the, from the 11th of uh, January to the 31st. If you want to do three weeks from now on, do it up to you. But I, or if you want to do four days, three days, just uh, water, which is now we're going to go to the other scripture in Esther chapter 4, verse 16 and 17. Esther chapter 4, verse 16 and 17. Go gather all the Jews who are at present in Shushahan and fast for me. Neither eat nor drink for three days, night or day. My mates and I will fast likewise. And so I will go to the king which is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went his wife and did according to all that Esther commanded him. So she was going to go to the presence of the king, and if you went to the king without being him calling you to come forward, she could have lost her head. And she pleaded with all the Jews. And they all fasted, and we all know the story. Esther became a queen, and God blessed them. So it's important the fasting and the prayer that we do, because we, it's the beginning of the year for us, for glory to God, and we're going forward. And it's also, even if you're not part of glory to God, for yourself, for your own life, all the things that I spoke about, it's important that you do all those things, and again, we're not going to say nothing, I'm not going to say nothing about direction for this year until the end of this month. So we all have a better understanding, because remember, be still. The teaching is about be still. We're not doing nothing, we're just talking about, and I'm just giving you some areas of your life for you to consider and help yourself to fix things in your life, so then you clearly hear and clearly there be no... A stoppage to what the Lord wants to do with us in this world. Now, one more scripture we're going to go to. The Revelation chapter 1, verse 5 and 6. And from Jesus Christ, the Father witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the kings of the earth, to him who loved us and washed us with our, from our sins with his own blood. And he made us kings and priests to his father, to his God and father, to him be the glory, dominion forever and ever. Amen. God made us to be kings and priests. I don't know about you, but I do both those things. I'm the businessman, work very hard every day, and at the same time, I'm the minister of God for glory to God, at the same time. I'm doing both. It's not easy, it's hard, but I'm doing both. And it's important that all of us take our part in the business you're in, in the work that you're working for, whatever you do, you got to do both. It's important that you do both. We all do both. We are called to do both. Okay? And Jesus Christ was the first born from the dead. After him, we came us. We, all, we also are came from dead. We are alive in him now. Okay? 
He was the first born, and then we follow all of us following after him. Okay. And he is the ruler over all the, all the kings of this earth. And he loved us and washed us our sins with his own blood. And made us kings and priests. He doesn't want you to be just a Christian who live in poverty and you think that you're doing something for him. He wants you to be the man and woman of God that he called you to be on this earth. And he called me to come to all the countries of the world and set up the churches and the business and all of us together. Everybody, the body start working, functioning together. That's why I'm saying to all of you, my brothers and sisters, to take your position in the body of Christ and glory to God and do what God called you to do as kings and priests. Now, I know many of you doing, some of, doing, some of you doing just the king part. Some of you doing just the priest part. But I have faith in God and I believe all of us together, all of you can try and can do both. We can do both. Because He said we can. He made us. So that He gave us authority and the ability to do that. For me, I want to see the body of Christ in the church of glory to God all over the earth this year to become a glorious body. For me, I want to see the glorious church of Christ rise up in glory to God. And I want to see every one of you take the part God has for you. Now I know we have a lot of brothers and sisters in Africa, but in Africa everybody is a pastor. No, no, no. My brother, no, no, no. There are five officers, apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, and pastors, and the nine gifts in the spirit. God has given every one of us a gift. What is your gift? You don't know. Pride, fast, pride. Ask the Lord to tell you. To tell you and tell me or tell the pastor in the church you're part of to what is your calling. To what is, what is your part. And do not take, my brothers and sisters, someone else's position. Just hold it to your position because your position is important for the body. And you all important for us. All of us together, we can do something wonderful in this world for Him. Amen? So, the body of Christ, I want to see you rise up this year. I want to see us loving one another this year. Whatever there might be the problem, sort it out, talk about it, work it out. Do not leave until you sort out the problem and forgive one another. Do not try to score points, okay? Just forgive one another. Serve one another. It's important we all learn to serve our Master, Jesus Christ. He, the day before He was crucified, He was washing the feet of the Apostles. Serve. Serve one another. Take your place, your place, in glory to God. For the body of Christ. Take your place in the body of Christ, in glory to God. Or if you're another church, fine. Take your place wherever God put you. Any church He put you in. Don't come to glory to God if God chose to be somewhere else. Take the place God's given you. Take your place in His body. So, I want to see this, and that's the, that's the final thing that I'm going to say for tonight. I want to see this glorious church become together of people and for us all together as a glorious body because as we become this glorious body Jesus becomes the head and when this happens there's no demon on earth 
or hell can come anywhere near this body of Christ. The demon will scream and run away from us when his, when his body comes together like that. Jesus is ahead of his body. And then we can go to the whole earth and preach the good news. God bless you. We love you here from Australia. Take care and have a blessed day and a blessed night.